Hello and welcome to vlog number 160. Last October I made a presentation to a group of Parkinson's patients about my experiences with using medicinal cannabis. This week I made that same presentation to the same Parkinson's group at the request of those members that have missed it the first time around. I'm repeating this presentation for this week's vlog. When I was a child I experimented with drugs. Firstly, when I was about nine, with tobacco, pinching cigarettes from the cigarette box that my parents kept on the table in the lounge to offer to visitors, which was a done thing apparently in those days, and retiring to the garden shed to smoke them in secret. Then I tried alcohol, swinging from the various bottles of spirits that my parents kept in their drinks cupboard, nearly making myself sick with a mouthful of neat gin, which I still dislike to this day but deciding that I quite like whiskey. Some years later, despite my father drumming into me that drugs were dangerous and that I should never ever take them, I experimented with cannabis many times and magic mushrooms once, being somewhat relieved when I survived these experiences. I grew up, started a career in the IT industry and stopped using cannabis, although I continued to use the really dangerous but socially acceptable drugs, tobacco and alcohol. Some 15 years later I turned to cannabis again, but this time it wasn't for recreational purposes. I was working as an IT consultant at a Dutch bank just outside Amsterdam and I became aware of a chemical smell in the office, but nobody else would smell it. I also noticed a mild tremor in my hand and my right leg. When my contract finished I went to see my GP who referred me to the neurology department at Southampton Hospital. I was examined by two neurologists who put me through the now familiar tests before declaring that I definitely didn't have Parkinson's disease and they didn't think that it was multiple sclerosis. So the diagnosis was benign essential tremor which, my GP explained to me, meant that I had a tremor but they didn't know why. I regarded this as a bit of a cop-out, a non-diagnosis, and I was gobsmacked at the mention of PD and MS. I'd never for a moment thought that two such big scary conditions were under consideration, and I was curious as to why they had been considered, and even more curious as to why they had been dismissed. So, I went online and searched the internet for the symptoms of Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. And I came across some accounts of people that had been diagnosed with these conditions and it had turned out to be mercury poisoning from their dental amalgam fillings. So then I started looking at the symptoms of mercury poisoning. I had a large number of dental amalgams and I was amazed to find that I was ticking off virtually every symptom. I went to see Dr Jack Levinson who was founder of the Society for Mercury Free Dentistry and who appeared to be the leading authority in the UK when it came to the diagnosis of mercury poisoning. Well, at the end of my consultation, Dr. Levinson diagnosed classic mercury poisoning. And so, I subjected myself to several months of pain, having whole, all of my dental metals removed and replaced with ceramics. And it was while I was dealing with this that I used cannabis to take my mind off and ease the pain, because the removal of all of these crowns and fillings resulted in the nerve death of several of my teeth and a subsequent root filling. Following the removal and some pretty basic detox which is supposed to help the body mobilise and excrete mercury that is stored in tissues and organs, I noticed a marked decrease in tremor in my hands and the tremor in my right leg disappeared completely. Fast forward 12 years to 2010 2010 had been a stressful year, what with the ending of a long-term relationship and subsequent move from Dorset to Norfolk, and I noticed, during my regular long driving trips back to Dorset to see my kids, that trauma was increasing in my right hand and re-emerging in my right foot. So I went to see my GP, who referred me to the neurology department at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital. After a thorough examination, the neurologist said to me, if I were a betting man, I'd bet you have Parkinson's. And so that was my diagnosis. 
Although I didn't take it on board at that time, I was in complete denial for the best part of two years. I was prescribed the usual range of Parkinson's pharmaceuticals, from dopamine agonists to carbidopa levodopa to trihexaphenidyl, none of which had any effect on my symptoms, but all of which made me feel extremely unwell. During this period, and subsequently when I had come to terms with my diagnosis, my Parkinson's was rapidly progressing. My tremor was getting worse and worse. I was suffering excessive daytime sleepiness. I had dystonia in my feet, had no motivation and was depressed. My tremor was driving me mad. All I did every day was sit and shake. I turned to the internet again, looking for natural trauma relief, and I came across some videos on YouTube that showed people with Parkinson's successfully treating their symptoms with cannabis. I knew someone that used cannabis recreationally, and I asked him to get me a small amount to try. I remember getting home with that scrap of greenery, rolling it up in a cigarette paper and smoking it outside the back door. And I remember the incredible relief I felt as, within a matter of a few minutes, my trauma was almost completely calmed. I suppose that what I should have done is kept quiet about it. After all, I was breaking the law. But I felt that I should make my GP and neurologist aware that I was self-medicating. My GP, at the time, ignored the fact that I'd just told her that I was using cannabis to manage my symptoms. She didn't give it any sign of having heard what I'd said and no comment was made. My neurologist of the day, they seem to change on a regular basis, made the comment that smoking it will damage your lungs, despite my having told him that I baked my medicine rather than setting the light to it. <coughs> Cannabis saved my life. I discovered it worked for me at a point where my trauma was making it difficult for me to feed myself. My quality of life was pretty poor. I didn't see much sense in carrying on. It was around this time that my neurologist persuaded me to allow him to refer me to the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery for assessment to see if I was a suitable candidate for Deep Brain Stimulation Surgery, or DBS. Part of this assessment involved a question and answer session with the entire DBS team. So there was me, my wife and about 20 other people in this little room asking me questions to gauge my mental attitude towards the procedure. And one of the neurosurgeons asked me what medications I was taking to control my symptoms. So, in line with my policy of being completely open and honest, I told him that I didn't take any prescription medications, but I did take cannabis. You could have heard a pin drop. Complete silence. When I looked around the room at the sea of faces before me, they were all grinning. So they knew that cannabis could be helpful in the management of PD symptoms. They were just forbidden from telling me so. During the time that I was waiting to have my operation, I used cannabis several times a day, and it made my life bearable. Since having DBS, my reliance on cannabis has dramatically reduced, but I still use it every day, usually in the evening. It helps me to relax, it helps me get off to sleep and stay asleep. Several months after my DBS operation, there was a news item on the radio saying that MPs were debating the legalisation of cannabis for medicinal purposes. And my wife suggested that I make a video to demonstrate how cannabis had helped me. So that's what I did. I switched my DBS off and filmed myself before and after vaping some cannabis. And I posted the video on YouTube. A couple of weeks went by and my video had been viewed maybe a hundred times, which I was pretty pleased with. And then one morning it went viral. And in the first 24 hours it was viewed more than a million times. It ended up being viewed more than 50 million times to date. Over 45 million of these were on just one Facebook page. The success of my video has led directly to further media exposure. The Radio 4 Today programme and LBC Radio have interviewed me. I've appeared in a couple of cannabis documentaries, the Channel 4 Health Programme, the Victoria Derbyshire Show, and, most recently, my video was used on the latest BBC Horizon Programme about medicinal cannabis. 
I'm a patient advocate for the United Patients Alliance, which is an organisation that campaigns on behalf of medical cannabis patients. And I've spoken twice in the Houses of Parliament in front of MPs and policy makers. More importantly, it has given me a sense of purpose, and I have, for the last three years, produced a weekly vlog which I publish on YouTube every Friday. Inevitably, the subject matter of many of these videos is medicinal cannabis. But I also vlog about a wide range of subjects of interest to people with Parkinson's, from restless leg syndrome to infrared light therapy and dietary choices. To conclude, I consider myself very fortunate not to have followed the advice of the neurologist who told me that cannabis would result in early dementia and hallucinations. Oh, I said, and the prescription meds don't do that, do they? At least he had the good grace to look shamefaced when he admitted that, yes, they do. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.